Good day and welcome to this presentation. In this presentation, we are going to have a look at intergroup transactions, specifically dealing with property, plant and equipment. And in this lesson, lesson six, we're going to look at when depreciable assets are sold and specifically when the parent sells to the subsidiary. In lesson seven, we will have a look at when the subsidiary sells to the parent. In the previous presentation, we discussed what happens when you have a sale or property, plant and equipment within a group and that sale results in a gain. So we had a look at when this property, plant and equipment is a non-depreciable item. But today we are going to focus on when it is a depreciable item of property, plant and equipment. Now, just a little bit of a recap. When you are dealing with a sale of property, plant and equipment and it results in a gain, then first of all, you need to eliminate the full gain because remember that asset remains within the group. So we want that asset to be reflected at its original cost price. So that gain that is made on that asset would be an unrealized gain. As the asset is depreciable, in this case, we would need to adjust depreciation. We would also need to adjust the tax expense. And remember that when we're dealing with the subsidiary selling to the parent, then we need to allocate a portion to the non-controlling interest and it will affect the analysis of equity calculation. So if we now start with an example, here we have Parent Limited who acquired a 70% controlling interest in Subs Limited on 1 January 2018. The group and all companies within the group have a 31 December year end. On 1 January 2020, Parent Limited sold a motor vehicle to Subs Limited for 350,000. The motor vehicle was originally purchased on 1 January 2018 for 500,000 and on 1 January 2020, so this is the day that the motor vehicle was sold, the motor vehicle had a carrying amount of 300,000 rand. Parent Limited group and all companies within the group account for property plants and equipment on the cost model motor vehicles are depreciated on a straight line basis over its useful life of five years the normal south african tax rate is 28 percent and the cgt inclusion rate is 80 percent now the required states that we need to prepare the consolidation pro forma journal entries for the year ending 31 December 2020, so in other words, the year in which this motor vehicle was sold to Subs Limited, as well as for 31 December 2021. So if we have a quick look at the thought process, first of all, we know that Parent Limited controls 70% of Subs Limited. Next, we know that Parent Limited sold a motor vehicle to Subs Limited, which means that the parent has sold property, plant and equipment to the subsidiary. And very important, we need to now eliminate the unrealized profit because there was a gain made on the selling of this motor vehicle to the subsidiary. Next, because we are dealing with a parent who sells to the subsidiary, it means that there will be no portion allocated to the non-controlling interest. Now, very important, a motor vehicle is a, a an depreciable item of property, plant and equipment, which means we therefore need to adjust the depreciation. So in other words, that gain that we made from the sale of this motor vehicle to the subsidiary is going to be realized through the use of the motor vehicle. And to realize that gain through the use, we need to account, we need to adjust our depreciation every year until that gain is completely eliminated in terms of through use. Now, very important when it comes to adjusting our depreciation, we need to consider the dates on which this item or property, plant and equipment was sold. So, for example, if this motor vehicle 
is sold at the end of the year, then you will not adjust depreciation for that specific period. But as in our example, this motor vehicle was sold at the beginning of the financial year, so we still need to adjust depreciation for the current year. Then, last but not least, we must not forget about the tax effect of, first of all, the unrealized profit from the sale of the motor vehicle, as well as due to adjusting the depreciation. So let's go have a look at the calculations. Now, first of all, in terms of our calculations, we have the sale of our motor vehicle. We know that the carrying amount is 300,000 Rand, the selling price is 350,000, and this is the amount at which Subs Limited is going to record the, the motor vehicle in their financial statements. This means that there was a gain on the sale of motor vehicles of 50,000 Rand, and if we calculate the tax on this, it would be 50,000 multiplied by 28%, resulting in an amount of 14,000 Rand for tax that needs to be adjusted. Now, very important, the 50,000 gain on the sale of motor vehicle is the amount that is going to be recorded in Parent Limited's financial statements. Now, this 50,000 is going to be realized through use but for purposes of consolidation, we need to eliminate this 50,000. So we need to eliminate the profit on the sale of the motor vehicle because we want the carrying amount to be reflected at 300,000 Rand according to the group. But this 50,000, we are going to realize it through you. So when we adjust our depreciation, it's going to be based on this gain on the sale of motor vehicle. But we will get there just now. In terms of our journals, if we look at our first journal, we need to eliminate the gain on sale of motor vehicle. So we're going to debit the profit on sale of motor vehicle in terms of Parent Limited's financial statements with 50,000. And we're going to credit property, plant and equipment for subs limited of 50,000. Now remember, once again, these journals are not recorded in the separate financial statements of these entities, but instead only for consolidation purposes though. These are only pro forma journals that will be written to consolidate, but these will not be passed in the separate financial statements. Then for journal two, we now need to take into account the tax effect due to this eliminating of the gain on the sale of the motor vehicle. So we need to debit our deferred tax with 14,000 and we're going to credit income tax expense with 14,000 Rand. Okay, so now we have already done, we've eliminated our unrealized profit and we have adjusted the tax on the unrealized profit. But don't forget, we are dealing with a de depreciable asset that was sold at the beginning of the year. So that means we still need to adjust the depreciation, which is based on our unrealized profit. And we also need to adjust the tax. Now, in terms of our adjusting of the depreciation, it will be where our gain is realized through use. Now the gain we said was 50,000 Rand and we are going to realize it through use. So we need to adjust our depreciation with a portion of the gain over the depreciation period. So we're going to write it off over the same period as our depreciation. And we were told that the group is going to write off this motor vehicle over the useful life of five years. So that means that we need to adjust the depreciation with 50,000 Rand being the gain divided by the five years being the useful life. And that means that our adjustment will be 10,000 Rand. If we have a look at our journals, we need to debit accumulated depreciation 
for motor vehicles with 10,000 Rand and we're going to credit depreciation of 10,000 Rand. Then we need to debit income tax expense with 2,800 and credit our deferred tax with 2,800 Rand. So those are our journals for the 31 December 2020 year end. But now we still need to go and process the journals for 31 December 2021, so the year after. If we start with what journals would have to be recorded for the year ending 31 December 2021, first of all, we start with our calculation, like what happened in 2020. Now, first of all, there was a motor vehicle that was sold and a gain of 50,000 Rand was made. We adjusted the depreciation with 10,000 Rand and that meant that there was still an unrealized gain at year end of 40,000 and the deferred tax on this amount would be 11,200. So that means that the net effect on our retained earnings for the 2020 financial year would have been 28,800. When it comes to our 2021 financial year, we would have to start off by adjusting retained earnings with 28,800. Remember, every year we need to post the pro forma journals. Now, in the 2020 financial year, there was this whole gain and the net effect being 28,800 on retained earnings. So now in the 2021 year, instead of posting all those journals again, we are just going to adjust retained earnings with 28,800. But we still need to also take into account the adjustment to depreciation of 10,000 and the tax on that would be 2,800 and at the end of 2021 our retained earnings will be 21,600. So if we start with our first journal for 31 December 2021, we have our retained earnings that we're going to debit for the beginning of the year being 28,800 but remember now we need to take into account all of our balance sheets items that are also affected by this. So for example we need to debit our accumulated depreciation of 10,000. We then need to debit our deferred tax of 11,200 and then we need to credit property, plant and equipment with 50,000 being the gain. For journal two, we now need to just account for the adjustment to depreciation for the current year. So now we're going to debit our accumulated depreciation of 10,000 and credit depreciation of 10,000. Don't forget about the tax effect. So now we need to debit our income tax expense with 2,800 and then credit our deferred tax with 2,800. Now, how would this solution change if it was Subs Limited who actually sold the property, plant and equipment to Parent Limited? So in other words, we have the subsidiary selling to the parent. We will have a look at this in lesson seven. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.